my name is David Montesano, and we're going to be discussing improving your transfer admission outlook, getting off the wait list today. Um, I want to talk a little bit about how admission works. I think that might be helpful to kind of back up for a minute and look at that. So we know that transferring um, it's, is something that's different from regular admission. We know that there, it's dependent on whether or not there are spaces, right? And, um, at, and that's big states, bigger schools, state schools especially, tend to have more spaces. Um, there's just more people, there's more chance of not, and, and schools that where people don't return uh, for, as freshmen to sophomore year, um, or they don't return as sophomores, I should say, and, and schools that don't have super high graduation rates in like say four years um, time, those are places where people can really look to transfer. And, and at some elite schools that we just talked about there, there were some examples of, of schools that did have a little bit more room. Um, but let me talk in general how, about how admission works. So there's a couple ways to look at admission. One is that it's just grades and test scores, you know, or grades, class rank, and test scores. And that would maybe include, should include your high school. You should think about your high school and including that information. Unless, I guess, unless the college says that they're not going to look at your high school information. But I would, I would anticipate that most of the time they're going to at least want to glance at it. Uh, and your college grades, the two years of your, hopefully, if it's one year, they're going to put more emphasis on your high school. That, that is the last two years of high school. And if it's two full years of college that you have and you're ready to transfer, you know, you're going to transfer in as a junior, which makes sense in many cases, then the colleges are going to put a lot of weight on those college grades, much more than they would probably on the, the high school grades. But no, nevertheless, it's important to give, to give them, or at least prepare to give them, your high school grades. Your, and your class rank, um, and also your college grades, okay? And that's really, that, those are really important. The other thing that you can't always get around either is the, the SAT or the ACT um, testing, and sometimes the subject test, depending on how difficult the admission is. Colleges love to see these extra, you know, this extra information. And so if you've taken an SAT or an ACT, that's sufficiently high, meaning that it's at or above their mean scores, then you definitely want to show that to them. If it's significantly lower, you might look for opportunities not to show that to them. And there are many schools that do not require the SAT. Um, there's a website called fairtest.org, and there you can find a list of schools that don't require the SAT or ACT at all. So if testing isn't your thing, uh, you know, and, and your, your scores are, 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 not, are below the averages of the, of the colleges you'd like to transfer into, then I don't recommend showing them your test scores unless you have a learning disability that, that's, you know, uh, kind of a mitigating circumstance or you have, um, you know, some other kind of medical condition or something that prevented you maybe from doing well on tests. Um, something provable, you know, that makes sense that you can show, show them. Uh, the other thing that schools look at now, holistic, they look at things more holistically these days, is they tend to look at also things like your activities and what you did outside of class, especially in high school. Uh, but they'll look at things like your academic extracurriculars. You know, did you spend time tutoring people in math, just even informally? Or did, were you, you know, on, uh, doing things that were more leadership oriented, like being captain of the tennis team? So things like that matter to colleges a lot. Um, and to certain colleges, they matter more than others. Private schools tend to, and, and the smaller the school, tend, they tend to get a lot more into um, what you did in terms of activities. And increasingly, big public schools are interested in that as well. So to give you an example, the University of California, you know, years ago might have just looked at grades and class rank and, and maybe read the essay. And now they're looking at, they definitely want to know about your activities, um, your academic awards and honors, and your, your, your activities, and certainly about academic activities and then leadership activities too, okay? So um, let's see if we have any questions so far. Uh, we do. Um, so one question is, how likely is it to transfer from a community college to, UC, to a UC as a sophomore? And what requirements do I need to transfer as a sophomore? So by UC, you mean University of California, right? Um, so the thing about the University of California system that's so great is there's a lot of different campuses, right? So that means that, you you know, if the more campuses you apply to, the better your odds are too, right? You know, so I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't limit yourself just to the, you know, only Berkeley or UCLA because, you know, you, you really want to give yourself the best shot of getting into a UC. And a UC, by the way, is a UC. 
I know some people might not agree with that, but fundamentally, uh, you know, it's pretty much the same if you go to, um, you know, UC Irvine uh, or Davis. Well, Davis isn't polytechnic, but if you go to UC Irvine, um, it's pretty similar, you know, in a sense, going to UCLA or, or, or UC Berkeley. Uh, and, and our UCSD is very similar, too. And so, you know, I just, I just wouldn't want you to miss out on uh, an opportunity to, to get into a UC because you're focused just on getting into the most difficult ones to get into. Um, you know, functionally, they'll give you much of the same stuff if you go to the other ones as well. But to answer your question, uh, the, each UC looks at this a little bit differently. So what you might look at, there is, there are four, there's a 14-point criteria for getting into UCs. You might look that up, okay? Just look up 14, U, University of California, 14-point criteria, you know, criteria. Now, this is for freshmen, but I believe it carries over into the transfer realm as well because really they're, they're, they are looking for some of the same things. It's not all the same, but it's some of the same stuff. Um, you know, do you come from a disadvantaged area? Have you had any kind of hardship? Are you economically disadvantaged? Um, all that kind of stuff. You know, that's part of kind of the tennis match that, you know, the get winning points in the, in the sense to get it, that it takes to get into a UC. So winning, winning admission to a UC is a little bit like a tennis match. And there's a great article, if you don't believe me, in the New York Times, I believe, about um, two students and that kind of shows you who gets into the University of California and how it works. So um, you might look that up too. I think it was Berkeley, UC Berkeley. But one of the things I want to mention, um, just kind of about the requirements, and then we'll, we'll move on, is that, um, and your question here about going in as a sophomore, it's, it's a little tricky because basically what UCs and what bigger universities want, I mean the research universities, especially the public ones, what they're really looking for is people just to kind of come in with the right number of units and just, you know, fit perfectly into a slot, basically. So they prefer people to come in as juniors. So usually there's a minimum requirement. You might have to look it up by college. So if you're looking at Santa Barbara, it might have a different requirement than, say, Berkeley. But what you want to do is just figure out what the requirements are. And more importantly, and I've noticed this is a bigger uh, kind of hiccup or something that can kind of a hitch, I guess, is that um, if you're not careful, you can have too many units. So if you have, for example, the number of units as maybe a junior would have, you can be disqualified from even seeking admission at some of the UCs. Um, so like Santa Barbara, I know for sure, is, it has this 90 unit requirement. So if you go past that, you don't get even looked at by them. But, but, UC, but UC Berkeley doesn't have that, I believe. So it's really important just to kind of know each school's specific requirements around the number of transferable units and whether or not they have a minimum and a maximum. That's critical for you to know that stuff. Then you can figure out whether you can answer this question um, for yourself, whether or not it makes sense to come in as a sophomore. Generally, though, they want you coming in as a junior. But again, be careful of getting too many units, okay? All right, um, let's move to the next slide here. Uh, so, so you kind of have an idea of holistic admission. That, those are the new rules. I'd really recommend, um, you know, showcasing your, your, acti your academic activities outside of class. So if you're tutoring people, that kind of thing if you're president of the math club, or if you're doing anything with leadership, secondarily, that would be the next most important thing. I mean, that, you know, sort of like team captain stuff or any kind of, you know, leadership after that would be also important. Okay, so look like it. Any other questions? I'll give, I'll give somebody one more chance here if there are any others, um, kind of last minute ones. It doesn't look like You've been a great audience, and I wanted to say thank you so much for your time. And um, best of luck to you is in transferring. I know you can you can get off that wait list, so just focus on some of the principles we talked about today, and you'll be very successful. I think. All right, take care. Thanks.